So here's another situation where real life is going to look different than sci-fi. Star Trek replicators are like, you press a button, you get a food thing. We have something like that. There are companies that are 3D printing meat and vegetables. But it's not going to look like, you know, converting energy into subatomic particles that make up a food. Honestly, that's just not particularly efficient. You would need a ludicrous amount of energy to make even one particle. As far as scarcity goes, scarcity isn't going to be solved by suddenly figuring out how to turn energy into matter. Again, that's super inefficient. Scarcity is going to be solved by better utilizing the resources we already have. And that's the thing. We already have the resources to make food scarcity a thing of the past. Much of the scarcity that is introduced to the market right now is artificial scarcity for profit. Like, I want to make this clear. We ask farmers to burn crops here in America. We throw out food that doesn't look great but isn't spoiled. And leftover unpurchased food goes to waste all the time. And that's just the food side of things. Like, it is a 97 degree day outside today. And all this light and heat energy that is making me miserable while walking my dog could be harnessed to power devices. We can do better jobs collecting and purifying rainwater or harnessing wind power. And then that energy could be put toward manufacturing processes with the resources we already have. Like, what I'm trying to say is we are nowhere near replicators. Replicators aren't going to solve our scarcity problem. Rather, if we're going to get to replicators, we need to solve our scarcity problem first. And that's what's going to let us advance our tech to that scale. But even then, like I said before, the amount of energy that would have to go into a replicator is unbelievably huge. So honestly, it might never be efficient.